Hello everyone, this is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Friday, January 27th with a weekend market recap video. We're gonna cover all of the major markets, current market environment, some sector analysis, and then look at a few kind of post-earning plays and take a look at some of those levels after the dust has settled. So let's get into it here. S&P 500 had a very quiet way to end the week Friday, um, down just 16 basis points. For the week though, we finished up 1% in the S&P 500. Now, last week when we did our weekend recap video, we put out a blog post, what we were looking at was the double or back-to-back -back inside weeks here in the S&P 500. So essentially what happened was we started off the year on the upside, we had a 1.65% move higher that first week of 2017. Then we had an inside week. Then we had a second inside week. This week, we followed through and moved higher, broke out above the top end of this range, the top end of this consolidation, and we now made new highs in the S&P 500. So if we go back to the daily time frame, we understand how we got here. Uh, Tuesday, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday was that breakaway gap higher. Thursday very quiet uh, inside day, or not quite an inside day, but um, uh, just a quiet session. Friday, also a quiet session. Now, this gap is still open here from Wednesday. That's gonna be important next week to see if the bulls can defend that. Is this gonna be some type of breakaway gap that we continue to kind of run higher, keeping that upper level momentum in place as companies report earnings, keeping uh, you know the, the bears just really on the run and the, the momentum high, or are we going to come back down here like we did in the IWM, which we'll get to in a moment, and fill this gap, uh, this gap from Wednesday next week? That'll be interesting. Uh, that's a key level, so that comes in at 228, about 50 uh, will get you into that gap, and I think that just would speak and, and give you a little bit more uh, sort of clues here as to how pent up and how on the run this rally is. Uh, but, you know, taking a step back, clearly higher highs, higher lows, continue to grind higher. This big range that we talked about for quite a while uh, and, you know, us and, and personally myself lightened up a lot here towards the end as we sort of waited to see how this was going to resolve. Now we have the answer, it's to the upside. Uh, could this be some big fake out? Can we you know, fall back down below this breakout level and then we start some, some real ugly kind of bear trap action? Absolutely, right? Anything's possible, but uh, there are still enough clues and context out there to uh, suggest that the uptrend, that the bulls still have uh, the momentum behind their backs and the path of least resistance now is higher. So 228.50, that would be the level I'd be paying attention to. The old highs back here, right around 227.50. Below that, if we started to break back below there, those are two lines in the sand uh, that I think you could use to really tactically measure uh, and, and sort of, um, you know, measure some risk against and perhaps adjust some exposure. Uh, if we look at the IWM, we did see that upside gap here on Wednesday, just like the S&P 500 did. Difference was we did come back down over Thursday and Friday and already fill that gap. You can see we tried to make a move out of this channel and uh, we are now sort of back into it, although it is close, depending on how you wanna draw that, you know, very subjective sort of line there. So uh, Russell 2000, it has been underperforming. This isn't anything new, right? It's the only of the four major industries that is not or currently at all-time highs or stones throw away from it. Uh, it is, you know, clearly pretty close. It's only about a percent and a half away, uh, but it's still kind of in this range overall and not necessarily clearing and making new recent highs. So we do want to pay attention to that. The NASDAQ 100 complete opposite scenario. This continues to just kind of grind higher momentum behind a lot of these names. We did have a handful of them report this week. We have some more reporting next week. We'll get into that in the video a little bit later on, uh, but the NASDAQ 100 continues to move higher. And then uh, the Dow uh, Jones, hit cross 20K to new all-time highs this week. Uh, we know that it still is continuing to hang out near those all-time highs. So it's overall a pretty constructive story here for the bull case. Um, maybe, you know, some back and filling, maybe some more consolidation, but I think overall, uh, the big story, S&P 500 resolving that six week range, those double inside weeks to the upside, extending the trend and pushing towards all time highs. As far as how we're playing it, um, to discuss this a little bit in the midweek video, but we started to ramp up exposure here on Tuesday uh, and then some more on Wednesday, building back into that long exposure. Remember we lightened up uh, quite a bit here last week in this range, just wanting to see how this is gonna pan out. Uh, we 
got our answer and we're responding to um, you know the market conditions accordingly so that's how we're playing it uh, let's get into some of the other major markets TLT continues to move in this range uh, you know these lows down here from December around 117 to 123 um, looks like there's just better opportunities out there it's doing its work it's trying to uh, carve out a base potentially a bottom uh, let's see if it can do that it needs more time gld kind of a similar situation right we talked about it running up to this 116 level which was a prior level of interest it's pulled off of it it's dancing around the 20 period maybe it needs to come down more uh, and just fill in and consolidate uh, wait and see mode here for GLD. That's the way I'd look at it. Silver, a little more interesting, right? A little more of a reaction here, especially on Friday, saw a nice move higher. So this one's staying a little more stubbornly bid. Um, that's something to take notice of. If we start to clear these highs, basically Friday's highs, that gets interesting. That can start to uh, change the trend that has been in place since August here in silver, which is to the downside. So uh, that would be interesting development there in silver. Hasn't quite done it yet. Uh, and I think if it can start to clear these highs up here right around 1635, 1640, uh, that gives you some proof that the bulls are interested uh, in this metal here. So keep that one on your watch list. USO, um, tried to trade this ourselves here uh, this week. Uh, and without any luck, we no longer have a position in it. We tried to get moving here on Thursday. And again, as, as a reminder, these charts here, these derivatives, these, these ETFs, USO, uh, they lose precision over time. USO has been chopping around uh, for quite some time in this relatively tight range. Uh, you really want to be looking at the futures contract here of WTI Brent to get a better indication of where your swing highs are and how this thing is really sort of panning out because the USO is looks pretty sloppy in here. Um, and, um, you know, just I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll let you guys kind of look in that. I can't pull anything up that looks too clean here in TC2000 to my knowledge. Um, so uh, USO though, the story is still consolidating. We're still waiting for it to, um, to sort of uh, make up its mind above 1150 this day right here thursday um this is where we thought maybe we would start to see this ramp up into the end of the week it didn't happen um so we're just kind of still sitting on our hands waiting to see which way this wants to move ung also kind of all over the place had this big gap up thursday but then uh you know sold off most of the session then it had another sort of reversal day on friday where it had a big gap down and then closed higher so this thing is all over the place um, and still is making up its mind. I think 850 again is, is, is a pretty important area that gets you back into um, you know the gap here that, that we really started the year off with um, in, in UNG, which was down an 11% day. So uh, kind of a mess here in, in both uh, UNG and USO. Would like to see the dust settle, get these levels a little cleaner, and then uh, start to move from there or start to pay more attention. Uh, looking at some of the sector analysis now, um, start with SMH. Uh, SMH semiconductors at all time highs. Uh, semiconductors have been uh, the leaders or were the leaders in 2016, first ones to emerge, had a strong trend. They're already up, uh, let's see, 5.88% this year, uh, and they're at all time highs. So clearly, still seeing rotation, still seeing those names stay bid up. XLK technology, uh, hand in hand with the semiconductors, also trading here at highs. IYT, this is the Dow uh, Jones Transportation Average uh, ETF. This one uh, tagged all time highs here at um, 171, pulled off just a little bit, but uh, did a nice job sort of consolidating the very strong run up through November and then started to emerge from it mostly primarily this week uh, and already again tag those all-time highs so a lot of interest there and then in industrials materials all following through there's a lot of support here in a lot of these names these are or i'm sorry in a lot of these sectors and these are the sectors that had the strong runs throughout november went through that period of consolidation mostly through time and now have recently emerged that's what helped get the s p 500 up there financials uh, also you know worth noting they all are back to their highs here after consolidating since the beginning of December. Didn't quite break out, ran right into this resistance, pulled off just a bit here on Friday. So this could be interesting if it starts to clear above these highs, 20, 2380, start to get a new breakout, fresh all-time high breakout. 
can watch those banks perhaps take another leg higher. So lots to like, lots of constructive action there across the sectors. On the downside, I mean, healthcare starting to firm up a little bit. We saw here at the end of this week, uh, you could see up 82 basis points here, almost 1% on Friday. That's encouraging. This uh, goes hand in hand with IBB, which is the major uh, biotech ETF. Really want to see this get back above 275. Remember, it's still up on the year. It was off to an early strong start, gave it almost all back, uh, and now it's trying to stabilize, trying to get back uh, its groove here to the upside. So I think if we can get a, a lift back above 275, uh, that could actually help get the Russell as well, because a lot of those smaller biotech names involved here in the Russell 2000 would get this moving again, Again, and, and again, would support certainly the bull rotational case uh, as we go forward. So that is uh, the quick rundown there on sectors. Let's look at some stocks that um, reported earnings. Google uh, had a had their earnings out uh, Thursday evening, and we did see a downside reaction to it. Not much though, down 1.4%. It's a $12 move because Google's so expensive, but. Uh, you know, level-wise, it's still in an uptrend above the eight period, above the 20 period, which is both rising, and we're, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, are at all-time highs here. If you look at the monthly chart, you can see this has just been running away. So uh, Google looks good. We'll see if it can come in and uh, challenge any of the, you know, nearby support down here around 825, this 20 period EMA. Uh, I'd be interested in owning this and, and trying to get aboard a trend and, and playing this. I liked it in here, I liked it in here, but I didn't want to step in front of it in front of earnings. I wanted to see that play itself out. So now that, that now that we're through there, I want to see the dust settle and I'd be interested in Google back on my radar to try and get long uh, if the setup presents itself. Netflix, also uh, one that reported earnings, was one of the first last week on Thursday, and this one now already back to closing at all-time highs. This is one that I am involved in, that we are involved in. Uh, we got long this, subscribers and myself, got long it on this day right here on Tuesday uh, as this came back down, showed a good amount of effort here that it wanted to sort of defend this open gap. Uh, sat through a couple of days of consolidation and now Friday had a nice two and a half percent move closing to uh, closing at all time highs. So Netflix, basically the same thing I'll be looking for in Google. Can we see some stabilization up here and can it start to resume its uptrend higher? And I would like to play it in a very similar fashion. So Netflix, something we're long. Uh, I like it. Looking for more out of it. Uh, Alibaba, this one also reported earnings this week. Remember, this one had a strong move higher to start the year. Consolidated had a nice lift off of earnings. Same exact scenario. We have a open gap higher, uh, and I'm looking now for this dust to settle, and I'd be interested in potentially getting long this if a setup emerges. This one is a little messier. It's not quite at all-time highs, but uh, it still had, um, you know, it's still in it heading in the right direction, which is uh, higher, and uh, that's something I'll be paying attention to. The levels you know, right now I'm just watching the 8 and 20, uh, needs more time. I don't want to jump in this right now. I'd like to see at least a few more days get a, a tighter kind of grouping of, of kind of like what we saw right in here before earnings. Uh, and then that's something I'd be paying attention to. And finally, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft had earnings this week. Uh, Friday, again, was the reaction day here, up 2.35%, uh, two all-time highs emerged from a nice base here. It was kind of waiting for those announcements, waiting for that release to come out as it was consolidating uh, within a couple of percent from all-time highs. We got the move, looks good, Chase is on right now, so it's back on the watch list. We have traded this back in um, past couple weeks, months, um, but for now, want to get it back, you know, want to get back involved in it. Don't have any clear setups just yet. Watching the 8 and 20 period, wait for some consolidation, maybe two, three, four day um, pause sideways or some type of pullback. And that would start to get my interest there back in this name. So that is the wrap up for this week. Hope you guys had a great trading week. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you again soon.